G'day guys, welcome to verbatim exercise number five. Again, I've got a verbatim from one of my volunteers. I appreciate them. They're a great learning tool for all of us um, and hope you're getting a lot out of them as well. So as usual, I'll read through and then we'll provide some feedback. Let me just share the screen quickly. Here we go. Let's get into it. Good morning, my name is Greg and I'm a chaplain here at the hospital. Would you like to have a chat? Yeah, that'd be nice, thank you. I'm so frustrated, I wanna go home. So you wanna go home? Yeah, I'm so frustrated, I wanna go home, but they still need to do some tests. So I'm staying in for a few more days, unfortunately. But how annoying for you. Yeah, it is. I'm worried that all my inside plants will die at home and they've been doing so well. Why are you good at growing plants? This is a lovely yellow flower, your plant here. Actually, it's what I did for a living before I retired. My girlfriend brought this plant in two days ago to cheer me up and the flowers are already starting to open up. Did you know that you need to turn this type of plant towards the sun every so often to help the flower petals open up? That's interesting, I didn't know that. Do you have any more tips to help me for keeping my indoor plants from dying? Well, be careful that you don't overwater your plants. Most indoor plants prefer to have a dry soil and not be overwatered. Yes, I learned that the hard way. How do you feel about the tests that you have coming up? I'm not sure, a bit nervous. So far, they don't have a clue what to treat. Must be strange not knowing what's causing the pain. Yeah, it's irritating and not to mention painful. I know that I need the test, but I still just want to go home. I understand. What's your home like? Oh, it's so relaxing and comfortable, you know. And I can eat when and what I want and sleep when I want, not when they tell me to. Yeah, I hear you. Just have a bit more control, eh? I'm sorry, I don't usually complain. The nurses and staff are great here, but I just want to go home. Understandable. Look, thanks for letting me ramble on. I do feel a bit better. Okay, so that's the verbatim, guys, a nice short one. Um, again, not a bad idea to stop the video at this point and just reflect on that verbatim. Ask yourself, how would you have felt if you were the patient? Would you have felt heard? Would you have felt understood and connected with? What did you think of the responses of the chaplain? Uh, what would your responses be like? This is an opportunity to go back to the start of the verbatim, hear what the patient says and practice your responses. And I know that changes the verbatim, but it's a great learning tool. And then you can just imagine what she would say and then how would you respond, okay? So it's all good practice. So here's some feedback I had for this volunteer of mine. I thought their introduction was good, it was clear, and that's always important. Uh, you can see here, the patient said, yeah, that would be nice, thank you. I'm so frustrated I wanna go home. And the chaplain says, so you wanna go home? So again, this is parody. Um, the patient states she wants to go home, so there's no point repeating that. As a result, she has to repeat herself again below in P2. At this point, just nodding would have indicated that you're listening and given room for this patient to continue. So again, if I ask someone, do you mind, you know, would you like a chat? And they go, yeah, sit down. Um, or that'd be nice. I'm so frustrated, I want to go home. Just listen, just with a look of interest and concern on your face. Hmm. Just a little sound like that is, is going to give her the very clear signal. Tell me about that. Share. Um, but if I felt a response was needed, just something like you just want to get back to your life. You know, that would have been, that would have sufficed. Okay. C3. So in response to P2, I'm so frustrated and I want to go home, but they still need to do some tests. So I'm staying in for a few more days, unfortunately. Chaplain responds, how annoying for you. Well, that response is okay, but you have responded to a feeling that is the patient's frustration with another feeling. Again, not the end of the world, far better than a, a question, far better than sharing a similar thing like, yeah, I know when I was in hospital, um, I wanted to go home on a certain day, they told me, but then they said, no, you need more tests. So I know. So at least by saying how annoying for you, you're putting it out there that you're trying to understand what this is like for um, 
the patient. However, she could have responded, well, it's not so much annoying, but it's frustrating because she keeps mentioning the word frustration, you know, that I can't go home. So when someone gives us a feeling like frustration, as they do in this case, respond with a loss that you think's related to that frustration. And if someone gives us a loss, think about what feeling might be connected behind those losses. So for example, when she says, I'm so frustrated, I want to go home, but they still need to do some tests. So I'm staying in for a few more days, unfortunately. See, I would be thinking to myself, what is the loss that that is frustrating for the person? What, what is she missing? So a response where you guess the loss, for example, like, it sounds like you just want to get back to familiar surroundings. So that helps prevent the parroting and avoids following a feeling word with another feeling word, you know? So as I said, following it with a feeling word is not the end of the world. But start to think to yourself, if someone tells you something which has feelings in it, ask what, what's behind those feelings? What's the loss behind those feelings? And if they're giving me the loss, ask yourself, what would be the likely feelings as a result of that loss? Okay? Okay. P3, so she tells us the source of her frustration in P3. Her, the source of her frustration is she's got these indoor plants at home. She loves them. She takes care of them very well. And she has concern because the longer she's away from home, the more these plants are on their own and, and are susceptible to dying. And that's obviously concerning her. But the chaplain misses that, okay? The chaplain comes back with a question. Are you good at growing plants? And then she comments on a plant that it, that was beside the patient on a bedside table. This is a lovely yellow flower here. So I said to Greg, you've missed it here. You've missed with this response. The patient clarified that her frustration with the medical process is in part related to anxiety about her plants. And then you ask a question. Remember, don't ask questions in a pastoral conversation. The question is usual, it's not important. And it takes the person out of their pit and back into their head and directs the conversation away from that space where she's sharing what's really important to her. It's a, always a sign that the chaplain's uncomfortable and not sure what to say. In this case, if you said nothing, that allowed the, the patient here to give you more information. But if the person themselves remained silent, then you've got to come back. So it's given you a couple of seconds to formulate a response, and you can come back with a response like, tell me more about that. Tell me more about that anxiety. You know, it's not a question, and it keeps the focus on their feelings. Okay? So in P3, the patient's given me the loss, the potential death of her indoor plants and the feeling worried so in this case you can pick which way you want to go because she's given me two things okay a loss and a feeling so for example it would be heartbreaking if all your love and care for these plants was wasted because you're stuck in here you see something like that would be enough to convey to her i'm listening trying to understand and giving her then an option to sort of vent a little bit more about that anxiety that she's feeling as you can all see in this verbatim, the response C4 from the chaplain leads to chit chat about the plants. Instead of an opportunity for this person to speak about her feelings and who knows what else, she's being asked about tips about indoor plant care. I mean, seriously, buy a book, Google it. This is not the opportunity to drain patients of knowledge that you might be interested in, okay? So... In C7, the chaplain says, how do you feel about the tests you have coming up? Okay, that's not too bad. They're trying to salvage the conversation at this point with this question. But again, as a way to practice not asking questions, a statement like, you mentioned some tests, that would be enough to give the person room enough to um, speak more about what tests and how she feels about that. Chaplain says in C8, must be strange not knowing what is causing the pain. Okay, this isn't bad. In P6, she gave us the feeling she was nervous. 
and you come back with the loss. The loss is certainty. She doesn't have that certainty because she's not sure what's causing this pain, okay? Um, I probably wouldn't say strange. I'd probably pick more uh, a word, you know, that I would imagine for myself, which would be concerning, frightening, scary, something like that. Scary not to know what is causing this, okay? Um, the patient responds, yeah, it is. It's irritating not to mention painful. So she gives us two feeling words, irritating and painful, and you're not sure what to say, so you said nothing. That's good, okay? It's always better for the chaplain to remain silent than ask a question or share an experience or give some advice. But now in reflection, think about how you could respond to those feelings. For example, we expect doctors to have solutions to what our problems are. You know, there is an expectation when people come to hospital that the doctor's going to be able to find out what is the cause of the pain. And it's very disconcerting. It's very scary and frightening. Um, and yes, irritating when the doctor can't say, yes, I know what's causing this and we can fix it. And then you can go, whew, I'm in the right place. But when you're in pain, when you're in discomfort, you're in a hospital and the experts say, we're not quite sure what's wrong. We need to run some more tests. That's scary, okay? C9, I understand. What's your home like? Okay, another question. Don't ask questions in a pastoral conversation. And But a statement more like, tell me more about what it means for you to go home would be fine. Tell me more about your home. You know, what's so special about your home? What do you miss most about your home? You know, I'm wondering what you miss most about your home. Um, something like that. The fact that she's mentioned this loss again means there's more she wants to, to share about home, what's really important at home. It may be more than just the plants. I don't know. But tell me more about it gives her permission to explore more in this in more detail. Okay. And in pH, she says, I know that I need the test, but I still just want to go home. Okay, so that's when the, the chaplain says, oh, I understand what your home like. But here the patient is letting us into their world. Okay, what she's really missing by being in hospital is control and peace. And you picked up on that perfectly in C10, which is really good. Well done. So again, when we're listening to someone, try and relax. Remember, there's nothing that we can fix there. There's nothing we can solve. There's nothing for us to correct. There's no advice to be given. There's no platitudes or injecting of hope. That's not my job as a chaplain. My job is to just listen and try and understand what do I think the impact of this is on this person? I do that by asking me myself, how would I feel? How would I feel if I was trapped inside, stuck inside a hospital and I was worried about my plants at home? I'm someone who loves gardening. For me, that would be really easy to think. I can be away on holidays. And it can be really hot. And I'll be thinking, I hope my plants at home are okay. I know no one's watering them. It's a bit scary. I hope they're going to be okay. You see? So put yourself in their shoes and ask yourself, what would it be like if I loved my plants, but I've been stuck in hospital longer than I thought and no one's there to water? I haven't organized that. And there's really no one I can ask. You know, each plant requires a different amount of water on different days. So, you know, try and always get into the world of the patient by asking yourself, how would you feel? Is it going to be exact? No, it's not going to be exact. But you're going to have a ballpark idea. And if you miss, the person's always there to supervise us and get us back on the right track. They understand that we don't know exactly what this is like for them but they will still pick up on the fact that you're listening and you're seeking to understand. And that's the important stuff. So again, just ask yourself some of these questions. Um, if you feel like sharing some of your responses with me, there's my email. If you have a meaningful conversation with a family member, a friend, a neighbor, um, and you can remember some of the detail of that conversation, what they said and how you responded, Put it in an email to me and I'm happy to provide some feedback. All right, let me stop sharing. Okay, that was our exercise number five. Thanks, guys. God bless.